uh, extreme Marxism. Right. Many people say Marxism wouldn't work because it's only about equality. It doesn't address liberty or incentives or so forth. So, uh, so I offer the same problem might face libertarianism. Is liberty enough? Is it co is it enough to uh, explain all the things that are to explain in reality, in social reality? Right. Okay. So maybe I'll uh, try and work backwards. Uh, Any of those or leave them. Yeah. No. Um, so first of all, is is liberty enough? And actually, that kind of goes back to the first question as well, because the, the question about whether or not equality should be brought into it. Of course, libertarians do, I think, bring equality in, but simply equality before the law. The principles of liberty have to be applied equally to everybody. So equality sort of comes in that way. But certainly no... Um, uh, uh, distributive justice uh, in terms of no having state. redistributive, uh, right, no welfare state. So, uh, right, and um, and I do think that's prob problematic, and I think the one place where uh, liberty seriously becomes a problem is, and where other values seem to come in, is exactly in these kinds of examples where you have somebody dying because they can't um, get any, uh, any health care or any health, because they can't afford health insurance. Um, from an otherwise completely treatable disease. And we tend to think that, you know, there is some sort of human feeling towards that person and that, you know, we ought to do something. And of course, libertarians allow for that as well, but it should be done in the private sector rather than in the public sector. The government has no rule. So of course, I'm not trying to make uh, libertarians look like horrible people because I think, I really don't think that they are. Um, and, and uh, but I do sort of want to push some of their ideas to the extreme. And I do think that there are other values that certainly creep in when we start thinking about questions like that. And equality might be one of them. Um, so as far as where I stand on that, I'm not exactly sure because uh, I guess what I was trying to, to bring in was liberty versus liberty, right? So two conceptions of liberty. Right. Um, and and uh, I wonder if the second conception of liberty that I, that I discussed has other values hidden within it as well. So it's not liberty sort of stripped of everything, which is definitely what the libertarian sense of liberty is. It's liberty, straight up liberty. And so, and, and, uh, uh, and yeah, and there is a good question about whether or not we can just reduce everything to that one single value. Uh, and I'm not sure that we can. Um, the second question that you asked was, can you remind me what the second question was? So the second, uh line of argument against libertarianism that I suggest is it can't even explain our basic relationships like our, our parents or well, our parents. mothers. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, that's, I, I wanted to mention, uh, uh, you reminded me of Susan, Susan Muller O'Kin's argument yes. against. Yes, O'Kin, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I went to Brandeis and she was just there by Calissa. Oh, really? She was there and she was actually an influence of my views. Yeah. So is that, is that what you were kind of referring to there? Because that's what it reminded me of anyway. Was well, you know, I didn't read her uh, account until after I had written my own arguments oh, yeah. in this regard. Yeah. But she, um, uh, Jeffrey Abramson was a, a professor who I spoke with quite a bit. And he made some of her arguments to me. So, yeah. you know, she left the department in 87 and I came in 88. But, but I was in the philosophy department in 89, but basically I took a lot of political theory classes. Yeah. And there was quite a buzz still, yeah. because she had some wonderful ideas. She, she did. really she engaged did. Um, uh, Rawls in a, in a great way. Yeah, definitely. And um, and she certainly, she also had a, a critique of, of Nozick, um, specifically Nozick. But because Nozick says that we, ha we should uh, be able to own the fruits of our labor, um, and, and there's a lot more to Oken, Oken's argument than, than just this, but she, she says that mothers, of course, uh, one of the fruits of their labor is their children. So it becomes difficult to argue that the children are not owned uh, as property already, as the fruits of the labor of specifically the mothers. And so um, Nozick would have a, a tough time explaining he does try to explain, but only in a quick, a very short sentence, I think, um, how it is that we can be free and not be owned by our mothers, even though we're, we're the, the fruits of, of their labor. Uh, actually, Thomas Hobbes, I believe, bites the bullet and says that mothers do own us. Yes, I think he does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and, 
and of course, I mean, Nozick was using uh, Locke. Locke specifically, but he does have this conception of the, you know, the, the state of nature. And in the state of nature, it would almost seem that mothers own their children since they own themselves and their children are uh, an extension of themselves. So, so we would become basically the property of our mothers. Um, so that may be one place, definitely another part where, uh, another place where I think libertarianism becomes problematic. There, there, there are feminists who use this to take down libertarianism. It's untenable. Right. Because literally we're all the slaves of our mothers. Yeah. <laughs> so we can't sell ourselves, we can't sell anything that we own because everything that we, we think of as our own property is And those mothers are owned by other mothers too, well, so yeah. Mothers before them, of course, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's a nice reductor. <laughs> There was a, you know, no, I, I, um, yeah. I kind of covered the first and the yeah. third question. I think so, together. yeah. I think so. I tried to. Um, does anyone else have, um, we, we've been, we've, you know, we've talked about um, Rob Paul as if he carries the, you know, the all libertarian the libertarianism torture. on his back. You know? <laughs> yeah. There are the libertarians yeah. out there. and uh, Right. Um, and, and I think they're an important part of uh, what's, for us right now in, uh, in our political environment, and as, as far as especially with the, the ideas that are being put to the table, we it seems like we only have the uh, the major parties, and they have pretty um, stale ideas. Right. So libertarianism, I want to say, uh, it, for me as, as an intellectual growing up, was incredibly important for me to have libertarians in college. Right. I mean, they really raised the level of argumentation and force people to be honest, you know, and engage some issues intellectually with, with intellectual honesty that you don't get, unfortunately, a lot. Um, well, I, and um, you, you mentioned, you know, people sort of getting tired of the old stale ideas. One thing that I think uh, Ron Paul, once again specifically, but uh, I know that a lot of people are attracted to Ron Paul. Um, a lot of them describe themselves as being disillusioned with, uh, with politics as usual. And so Ron Paul does offer um, an alternative, some sort of alternative to definitely the, the, those stale ideas. Um, and, and I think that libertarianism can also be very exciting and that uh, there is something very appealing in the concept of liberty. Um, so, I, you know, and, and I don't and want to... And that we're losing, right? Yeah, we're losing, losing a lot of liberties losing, in our current political environment. Sure, yes. A mass liberties, anyway. And that's also why I think libertarians um, uh, are also an important part of this movement, right? right? So, I mean, so, uh, you know, I raised this question uh, more to create a dialogue about what the liberty really is, and of course there are different conceptions out there, and I think that the disagreement is a good thing because it does uh, help us to sort of get to the bottom of what we mean when we talk about liberty. Um, so you know, hopefully. That's, but it, that's what we've been doing. Uh, the idea of uh, li liberty itself, I think, was the only foundation for our country. You know, was life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So right. In that, liberty was just one of the values that we held, right. life being one of them, you know, and that might be equated to uh, an equal, each one of us has a life, right. it, it you know, should be held equally in the concept, and that, and then the pursuit of happiness, you know, that's an individual type of uh, thing, not, you know, each well, one has a race. Qualities of issue as well because right, we, we yes. want to give people equal opportunity. Right, right? equal opportunity as well. Sure. Equal opportunity. So in there, you know, it, you, the libertarian stance. I'm glad that there's individuals standing up saying, you know, the libertarian ideals. But how do we deal with you know some of those, you know, you know moral issues that most of us come down and say, you know, we don't want people running around, you know, selling themselves off, and you know. Were they coerced into that? You know, so where's the safeguard? You know, would that be government that steps in and you know That's protects good. us? Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, you have the right to do it. Uh, are you really, really sure? You know, you know, some kind of check. You know, on that type of thing. Well, then, when then we go back to the life issue. Well, your life is. You know, don't you hold it sacred and you just want to give it away for nothing? That's yeah. what I was going to ask also. Is it seems to me the problem is or a problem is. You know, you have the right to sell yourself into slavery or cannibalism, whatever, and therefore you have the right to hurt yourself 